Okay, Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Today, I will teach you on the chapter 3 which is accounting equation and accounting classifications. Okay, so what you will learn today is there are five lesson outcome that you will be learn in this chapter. The first one, you can identify the elements in the balance sheet. The second one, describe the basic accounting equations. The third is relate the balance sheet components to the accounting equations. The fourth is describe the extended accounting equation. And the last one, relate the income statement components to the accounting equations. So, for this week, we only cover these three objectives which is the we can identify the element in balance sheet we can describe the basic accounting equations and the last one relate the best balance sheet components to the accounting equation so this week you will be only learn this learning objective and the others two you i will explain to you in the next video okay let me start Okay, before we go further, I would like to explain there are three types of financial statements. The first are SOCHI, which is stand for Standard of Comprehensive Income or also known as Income Statement. The second is Standard of Statement of Financial Position, also we call as soft P, also known as balance sheet and the last one is cash flow statement so i have stated that the role or the function of the income statement for the income statement why we have to do income statement is because we want to measure the financial performance or profit profitability over a specific period of time Sebagai contoh, kita buka bisnes and then kita nak tahu tahun tu kita berjaya untuk dapat profit atau tidak. So, dengan cara kita nak tahu whether kita dapat profit atau tak, kita kena buat income statement. Untuk second one is, for the second one is soft P. Apa tu soft P? Kita summarize business asset liabilities and equity at a specific point of time. So, apa maksud asset liability dengan equity, I will explain in the next slide. For the cash flow, apa function kita buat cash flow, kita nak tahu the flow of cash in and cash out of the business. Maksud dia, apa je yang terlibat dalam cash kita akan menggunakan cash flow statement. Contohnya, kita nak menjual air di pasar malam. And then, duit masuk dan duit keluar tu kita kena catat. So, bila melibatkan cash, kita kena catatkan dalam cash flow. Sebab ia melibatkan cash, cash in and cash out. Itu maksud dan function untuk these three type of financial statement. Okay, next. After that, we have to classify the business transaction. So, in this slide, I would like you to know how can we classify business transaction in financial statement. Macam yang kita belajar tadi, financial statement terbahagi daripada tiga. So, daripada asset-asset, maksud dia daripada business transaction, for example, asset, owner equity, liability, revenue and expenses, mana kita patut letak semua business transaction ni? Untuk tiga di atas, iaitu asset, owner equity and liability, we will put them into the statement of financial position ataupun kita panggil sebagai soft P. Kalau untuk revenue dengan expenses, kita akan letak dia dalam income statement. Kenapa income statement? Sebab tadi ni yang kita belajar awal-awal, SOCHI tu 
ataupun statement of comprehensive income kita nak tahu kita dapat profit ke tak jadi apa-apa melibatkan hasil ataupun melibatkan perbelanjaan kita kena letak dalam income statement so kita kena letak yang ni dalam income statement dua ni maksudnya hasil yang kita dapat dengan perbelanjaan yang kita buat kita kena catat dalam income statement tapi untuk financial position kita kena catat asset on equity and liability so apa tu saya tahu yang mana yang uh, nice accounting student it, you might be think or you might be confused what is asset what is on equity what is liability so for the further explanation on these three types of element in the statement of financial position so let me learn what element in soft P or you also know as statement of financial position so what is element in soft P first we have to know what is statement of financial position as I have explained before this during the type of financial statement so we have know that asset liability and honest equity are in the statement of financial position so there are two ways to present the financial position such as the first one is traditional or horizontal form like this which this one asset and this one equity and liabilities and we also can represent in one way which is vertical form asset equity and liabilities so there are two ways if you want to do the statement of financial position so let's we go on what is asset we go through one by one what is asset what is liability and what is honest equity okay what is asset asset is okay kalau untuk orang yang bukan accounting so the keyword for you to remember is own which mean if we own something the something is our asset for example if you buy a house so you own the house when you own the house your house is your asset so itu dimaksudkan dengan asset atau lebih kurang uh, ataupun benda lain kita boleh cakap that keyword lain adalah harta so asset is your harta so for the further explanation you you may read by yourself this one where you need to have your asset uh, it might be benefit for your business uh, so yang lain ni uh, you can read by your own now i would like uh, to explain on there are two type of asset what is the type of asset adalah satu non current asset satu adalah current asset non current asset Asset acquire not the purpose of resale to be held for more than one accounting period. This one, apa yang dimaksudkan dengan non-current asset? Okay, kalau kita, in, I will explain briefly, uh, non-current asset adalah asset yang kita akan pegang ataupun kita akan acquire untuk lebih daripada satu tahun. Contohnya, apa maksud dengan karya aset? Contohnya, tanah. Bila kita beli tanah, kita kena fikir yang kita akan pegang tanah tu untuk jangka masa yang panjang. Tak mungkin kita beli tanah hari ni, esok kita akan jual. So, tanah itu adalah non-current asset. Apa beza non-current asset dengan current asset? Current asset, cash and asset require for resale and expected to be convertible into cash within one year of balance sheet date. Maksud dekat sini, asset acquire for resale. Yang ni, acquire not purpose of resale. Maksudnya kita hold 
land contoh kita bukan intention untuk jual tapi kalau current asset kita ada intention untuk jual barang tu untuk dapatkan cash sebagai contoh inventory inventory contoh kalau kamu ada perniagaan jual kasut and then apa kamu punya inventory adalah kasut so bila kamu jual kasut kamu akan dapat duit So, itu dimaksudkan current asset sebab tu inventory diklasifikasi sebagai current asset. Untuk debtors or receivable, debtors ni apa? Penghutang. So, bila orang hutang dekat kita, so kita akan dapat cash within a year. So, mesti uh, orang akan bayar hutang dekat kita dalam masa setahun. Jadi, itu adalah kita punya current asset sebab kita dah bagi hutang dekat orang, orang kena bayar dalam tempoh within satu tahun dekat kita. So, itu dah, dah diklasifikasi sebagai current asset kita. And sama juga untuk cash and bank balances. So, maksudnya kalau cash ni kita akan pegang sebab cash dia mudah cair. Asset yang liquidity dia tinggi. Maksud dia apa maksud aset mudah cair ni? Duit tu senang untuk habis. So within a year cash will be habis. Sebab kita beli barang raw materials untuk bisnes kita. Jadi bila kita berjaya untuk cairkan duit ataupun kita berjaya untuk cash akan habis within a year, kita anggap dia sebagai current asset. Itu yang kita maksudkan sebagai current asset. Okay, next. What you need to know. Bila non-current asset, there are three types of non-current asset. The first one is tangible, which is asset that has physical existence. The second one, intangible, asset that has no physical existence. And the last one is quote and unquote. Investment or fixed deposit. So it's mean tangible adalah has physical existence. For intangible, no physical existence. Maksud dia, in reality, macam saya bagi contoh tadi, contoh nangkari aset seperti tanah, seperti rumah, seperti bangunan, benda tu kita boleh nampak in real life, in reality. So, benda tu kita classify as tangible. Intangible ni contohnya macam pattern. Pattern, okay, this one is macam mana kita tahu McDonald's? Sebab hanya McDonald's je pakai macam ni. Macam mana kita tahu this one is KFC? Sebab daripada dulu yang kita kenal KFC, gambar dia macam ni. And then, for trademark, boleh ke tiba-tiba uh, McDonald's nak pakai its Finger licking good. Tak boleh sebab it just untuk KFC. Contoh kalau kita ada perniagaan, kita buka kedai jual uh, fries. And then, uh, and then uh, kita pakai uh, trademark ataupun kita pakai trademark yang sama macam dah dikeluarkan oleh orang-orang lain. Contoh, fries, uh, fries finger linking good. So, it's tak boleh. It's sangat di, tidak dibenarkan dalam law. Kenapa? Sebab dia orang dah daftarkan, contoh KFC dah daftarkan dengan uh, dengan dalam atas syarikat untuk menggunakan trademark tu. Jadi, sesiapa yang menggunakan trademark yang sama, ia akan disamain. Uh, itu di, kita di, uh, classify as non-current asset. So, benda ni tak nampak. Mana yang kita tak 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 boleh sentuh in reality. Kita tak tak boleh tahu kata, oh, uh, kita boleh pegang lah. Um, uh, contoh, kita boleh pegang lah pattern tu. Uh, so, dia tak ada dalam benda yang reality. Kita just tahu kata, okay, slogan, logo, pattern. Hanya untuk company tu sahaja. Itu yang kita classify as intangible. So, the last one is investment. So, apa tu investment? Contoh dia, fixed deposit 
atau quote and unquote investment. Apa tu fix deposit? Contohnya macam ni, kamu ada account dekat BSN ataupun uh, ASP lah senang. ASP and then kamu nak duit kamu, hari ni kamu simpan RM1,000, hujung tahun nanti ada RM1,100. So, means duit kamu is growing. So, when your money is growing, you will get some profit or you will get some benefit bila you simpan duit you on uh, in the ASP. So, itu maksud investment. Apa yang kamu invest untuk biarkan wang kamu tu banyak in the future. Itu maksud investment. Okay, so next we will continue with the second element in the soft P statement of financial position, which is liabilities. Apa tu liabilities? Liabilities adalah when we owe someone. Maksud dia kat sini, bila kita hutang dengan seseorang ataupun dengan outsiders, itu kita panggil adalah liabilities. So, a liability is the present, present obligation of an entity arising from past event, the settlement of which is expected to result in an outflow of resources. So, maksud dekat sini, present obligation adalah hutang. So, maksud dia, kita hutang dengan orang luar. So, itu kita maksudkan sebagai liabilities. The words yang you senang ingat, O. O dalam uh, bahasa Inggeris and dalam bahasa Melayu adalah, is mean, hutang. When you hutang with somebody yang outsiders daripada your business. So, itu adalah you classify as liabilities. So, there are two types of liabilities. The first one is non-current liabilities. The second one is current liabilities. So, apa tu non-current liabilities adalah hutang. Obligation is hutang expected to be settled after one year. Maksud dia, hutang yang kita buat lebih daripada setahun. Contohnya, loan. Loan kalau kita beli kereta kan selalu lama dalam masa 9 tahun. So, itu kita panggil sebagai non-current liabilities. Kalau current liabilities pula, dia lebih kepada hutang yang kita boleh selesaikan expected to be settled within one year. Maksud dia short term loans. Yang kita boleh selesaikan dalam uh, less than one year. So, this one is for uh, more than more than one. This one is less than one year. So, biasa dia kalau nak kara liabilities adalah kena lebih dari satu tahun. Hutang. Kita akan hutang orang tu lebih dari satu tahun. Tapi kalau untuk kara liabilities, kita akan hutang tapi kita berjaya untuk bayar balik less than satu tahun. Okay, so next, I will continue on the honest equity. Okay, apa tu honest equity? Untuk kita senang faham, honest equity is belong to honest. Maksudnya apa-apa yang kepunyaan owner tu. Jadi, contoh. Encik Ali buka kedai runcit. Jadi, bila dia buka kedai runcit, Uh, dia akan ada modal yang dia modal untuk dia mulakan perniagaan. Itu kita panggil sebagai capital. This one. Apa maksud? Capital adalah modal. Modal yang dia letak dalam company dia tu. So usually in form of cash. So bila dia letak modal dalam dia punya uh, business So, itu adalah belong to the owner. When it's belong to the owner, kita classify dia as honest equity. Maksud dia, equity is the residual interest in the entity asset after deducting all liabilities. Maksud dia macam ni, equity ni sama dengan asset 
aset apa yang dia ada dekat dalam business minus dengan okay. so dia minus dengan so dia minus dengan liabilities so itu yang dimaksudkan equity equity dalam business kita kena ambil aset contoh aset dia uh, yang dia ada rumah dia kena tolak dengan hutang-hutang yang dia ada itu yang dia maksud sebagai equity ok so uh, honest equity kita boleh juga bahasa sebagai capital net worth shareholders fund and shareholders equity ok next ok I would like you to do some exercise so that uh, you boleh classify which one items akan include dalam asset, liabilities and equity. So I hope that uh, after you do some exercise uh, we can do some discussion on this exercise. Okay, so uh, we gonna uh, we will continue with our second subtopic or the lesson outcome that we will cover for today which is basic accounting equation so we have to know what is basic accounting equation actually basic accounting equation is form a basis of whole double entry bookkeeping system so apa yang kita kena tahu dekat basic accounting equation equation apa yang kita patut pakai untuk kira asset Contohnya, kalau resources yang kita dapat untuk buka bisnes tu memang daripada owner je. So, kita kira dia as asset sama dengan equities. Tapi, kalau resources tu kita dapat daripada owner dengan outsiders, kita akan kira dia asset sama dengan liabilities plus owner's equity. So, ini cara kita macam mana. This one, you have to remember. Masa dia, selalunya jarang berlaku untuk owners saja buka perniagaan. Dia akan, mungkin kalau yang ni, kita boleh kira perniagaan yang kecil-kecil. Tapi kalau melibatkan perniagaan yang besar-besar, kita kena juga pinjam perniagaan. Uh, loan ke daripada orang luar masa dia kalau kita nak buka syari, um, kedai menjual kasut macam tadi kan, kalau kita nak buka kedai jual kasut kita mesti buat loan kalau kita tak cukup model untuk buka satu bisnes, contoh kalau uh, model yang diperlukan RM10,000, kita cuma ada RM5,000 jadi kita buatlah loan dekat uh, bank untuk RM5,000 lagi jadi disebabkan kalau kita nak buka perniagaan yang besar kita terpaksa pinjam daripada outsiders ataupun selalu outsiders ni bank lah so kita kena guna formula this one usually kita memang akan guna formula this one which is asset equal to liabilities plus audience equity so This is some exercise I would like you to do and then for if you are not not understand or you have difficulties to do this exercise you may chat me privately so that I could assist you one by one or you can post in our WhatsApp group so that I will try to explain to all of you if you are not understand on these videos. Okay, I think that's all for our today class. So, uh, thank you for listening and thank you for watching and I hope that everyone can understand when you are watching these videos and I hope that everyone can do the exercise. Anything for any query or any question that you didn't understand when you watch this video you may ask me privately or you may uh, 
us in our group discussion or group WhatsApp so that I can assist all of you in a very detailed explanations. So I hope that's all for today. Thank you.